Approval processes affect what we do every single day. Whether it's something as simple as uh, taking a document and asking for someone to approve it before it gets further processed, or even our own approval processes for the way that we make decisions in our day-to-day -day lives. They are everywhere. And they are nowhere more prevalent than in Power Automate when we start to look at our automations. In my last video, we looked at how we could use sequential workflows. So we looked at the pattern of going from one to the next to the next. In this video, we're going to look at majority rule. In Power Automate, we have two key types of approval available to us. We have the first to respond and we have everybody must approve. So the first to respond, if I've got several people who are being asked to approve something, it's the person with the fastest finger that is going to uh, make the overall decision. If we say that everybody must approve, that means that all seven people have to select approve uh, in response to the approval, otherwise it's rejected. And if one, so if one person rejects it, that's it. Everybody, uh, it's kicked everybody else out. So legitimately, we could say that for something to go through, as long as we've got more people saying that they approve than saying they reject, then, then why not push it through? And so that's the pattern we're going to look at. And effectively, what we're going to do is build an approval, uh, an, uh, 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 get a list of approvers, we are going to send each one of those approvers a new approval action. We're going to track what they respond and we're going to keep score with each person that responds. And from there, we'll get, we can then do a comparison and make a final decision on whether the, doc, uh, the item or the document is approved or rejected. So let's not talk about it, let's go and do it. So I am in uh, SharePoint. So I'm basing this off SharePoint lists. Now, the first thing that I've got in here is I have an approvers list. So these are the people that I am going to be uh, sending approval actions to in order to try and get a majority. Now, I'm choosing uh, three uh, just so that I can make sure that I get a majority. But we can always just extend what we're going to be doing to handle whatever outcomes we need. I've also got a submissions list. Very, very simple list item just sat there. And I'm going to click on a button and send this item for approval. But before I do that, let's go and have a look at the flow and start building it out so that we can start to track who's responding and that we can track the scores as we go. So here we are in Power Automate and I've done a little bit of, bit of work here just so uh, we can save some time. But just to familiarize yourself with what I have done is I've got my trigger, which is for a selected item. That means that someone has to press the button in order to get this flow to run. Because I don't get all information to do with a list item back uh, by using this trigger, I've got get item. And so that is going to give me all of the metadata associated with that particular list item. I'm then using get items to go away to my, uh, to my uh, approvers list and give me everybody back. From there, what are we going to do? Well, now that I've got my item and I've got my approvers, we now need to go and start to think about our, our approval. So I've got some basic information in here already. But what I said earlier on was, if I select uh, my approval type as first to respond, then whoever comes back, it's only the one person who needs to respond in order to make sure this goes through. Uh, likewise, if I select one of the other options, so everyone must approve, then it's going to wait for everybody to say, yes, I approve before it goes. But what we want to do is try and get everybody to have their say, and then we're going to count the votes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this as first to respond. It doesn't really matter what we select in this because we're only get, uh, we're going to trigger a new start and wait for an approval action for every single approver. So each, uh, each approver is going to have an independent uh, approval process. So I have get items, which is bringing back an array. So as soon as I put the, um, the information for the approver into my assigned to box, it's going to create a loop. Normally I'd shy away from this, but in this case, this is exactly what I want. 
So I'm just gonna go and filter down to my approver and I'm going to select the approver email to go into that box. And just like I said, it's gone into an apply to each loop. Now that is absolutely fine because I want it to loop around every single person again. Let's just go and update that name. So I'm going to apply to each and it's going to apply to each approver. But what, what do I need to do now? Well, I need to handle the outcome from my start and wait for an approval. So let's go and build in there a quick condition. And just like any of the other videos that I've got on approvals, I'm going to take the outcome. So that is the uh, that is the value that is uh, that is selected from the approval process. And I'm going to say where it's equal to approve. So if it's equal to approve, it's going to come down my yes route. If it comes down, uh, if it's not, so it's been rejected, it's going to go down the no route. So now that I've got my conditions here, well, now we need to start keeping score. So how do I keep score if I'm going around in a loop uh, to make sure that actually we're keeping accurate counts here? Well, let's go and have a look. So I'm going to use a variable. Actually, I'm going to use two variables. I'm going to create, first of all, a variable to store the number of approves. So whenever I uh, create a variable, I need to initialize it first of all. And I'm going to call that my approve count. And from my type, it needs to be an integer and I'm going to initialize it with a value of zero because when this first runs, we haven't got any approves. Let's go and do exactly the same for reject. So I'm going to initialize my variable again. And this is going to be my reject count. Make it an integer and set it to zero. So now I've got two variables that are sat there waiting for me to do something with them. Now at the moment, I'm not doing anything, so they're always going to be zero. But let's come down to my apply to each approver, come into my outcome. Now what I want to do is each time somebody presses approve or reject, I want to increase the relevant variable by one. So if I add an action, first of all, in the if yes route, and I'm gonna go and look at my variables, let's click on the variable connector, and look at what I've got in here. So I've got increment variable. Amongst others, there are some really useful things in here, but this is the one that I'm interested in. So if I select increment variable, this means that it's going to allow me to increase my approve count by one. So each time we loop round, if some, that person presses approve, then it's going to increase by one. So far, so good. Let's just go and re let's just rename that and let's go and do exactly the same on the other side. Increment variable increment the reject count by one. So far so good. So now if it's approved it's going to add something to the approved count. If it's rejected, it's going to add something to the reject count. So what I'm gonna do now is just completely shrink that, um, that loop down because I would now need to do some processing after those loops have completed. I don't want to do it inside the loop because otherwise I'm going to be processing it every single time it, um, for every single approver. So once my uh, approver loops have completed, I just need to do one more condition here. And I can do a, if my approve count is greater than my reject count, then I can then mark it as approved. I can, uh, if it's not, I can mark it as rejected. So let's go. So this is for my majority. And so from there, I can go and update item. Let's go and fill it with some details. Uh, 
Because title's mandatory, I'm just going to give it a title. And set my approval status of approved. And I'm going to quickly copy that to my clipboard, just because I don't want to have to go through all of that again. So, update item, approve. Let's go and use the clipboard. Update item. Let's just expand that back out again. And reject it. Okay, so now, based on how many people approve versus how many people reject, I can come down this route and I can say, if yes, then it's going to come down this route. If no, it's going to come down th uh, this route. So if, it, if my approvals win, we're all good. Now, you can expand that out. You can do more in terms of processing on whether approve is greater than reject. Maybe you need a, an action or a further, uh, further outcome to say whether approve is equal to reject. And in that case, you can do some pr uh, further processing. You can maybe have a switch, um, which will uh, allow you to have multiple legs coming down. But I'm going to keep this nice and simple. I'm going to just have, if my approve is greater than my reject, it's going to be approved. Otherwise, it's going to, it's going to be rejected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this. So let's go ahead and run the approval. Let's just give that a quick refresh. Let's click on the menu, down to automate, and let's go for my majority approval. And let's run it. Good. Let's go and see if it's running. So here we go. So I can see that my flow is running. And as we'd expect, it's paused because we're waiting for an approval to be completed. So let's go and fire up the approval center and I've got an approval waiting for me. So let's approve that one. And refresh again. Let's approve that one. And for the final one, number three, let's reject it. So now my flow has completed and I can see that I've got three iterations. Each time I've been processing the outcome. So I've got my first one, which was approve. My second one, which was approve. My third one, which was reject. So I've got two approvals, one rejection. If I come down to my majority, it's still gone down the approve route because I had more approvals than rejections. And there we go, There's my, uh, my status has been approved. But there's one final thing that we need to consider. And that is, that was quite slow. And if I've got a lot of people that I want to try and uh, push this out to in one go, um, then waiting for each person to do it in turn is going to take a long, long time, especially if it takes people longer than it takes, uh, takes me than just a few seconds to go and press tick. Yes, I want to approve it. So, there's one more change that we're going to make. And that is going to be changing the configuration of our reply to each approver. So at the moment, it's running sequentially. It's running one, then number two, then number three. I wanted to try and do some parallel processing. I want it to hit as many people as I possibly can make it hit in one go. So let's go and click on the ellipsis in the top right corner and come to my settings for this, uh, for this um, loop. Now, what I've got in here is I have concurrency control. So this is how many threads are we going to have running simultaneously? Now, in this case, I'm going to turn on concurrency and I'm going to just fire that up to 50. So 50 is the most I can, uh, I can have running at any one point. So I'm gonna press done on there. So this effectively means if I go and run that exact same thing again, that when I go to my flow approval center, I will actually have three things waiting there for me, not one like you saw the first time we run through this. So let's go and push that last test through again. Away we go. 
So again, it's going to get to the approval step and then it's going to sit there and it's going to wait. This time, if I come to my approval center, let's press refresh on that, I have three items waiting for me. And so just to prove the, uh, the opposite of what we did before, let's go for two rejections, a reject. Notice that at this point, this still hasn't completed, it's still waiting. Let's do the second one as an approve. And the third one as a reject. So this time, my loop completes. And this time, majority doesn't rule, we've got a rejection. And so, my flow updates my item to say rejected. So now we've looked at our second pattern for approvals. We've looked at sequential and now we've looked at majority. Now it's up to you to choose which one of the patterns works best for you for your given circumstance. There's nothing wrong with using the out of the box approvals. So don't forget you can approve uh, and the, uh, with a first to respond. You can approve with everybody must approve. We've now got the additional patterns with a little bit of extra work where we can do it sequentially and also now through a majority. So just remember that you need your variables at the start to keep count. You need to make sure that after your loop is completed that you then do your comparison at that point, not inside the loop, otherwise you're doing it, you're doing it for every single person. And finally, if you uh, want to make it uh, ultra uh, efficient so that you're hitting as many people as possible, turn on concurrency. Flick those concur uh, that concurrency setting up so you can have up to 50 people all voting on that item at the same time. So I hope that was useful. If you do have any questions, please do feel free to post in the comments for the video. Or you can reach me on Twitter at MattWeston365 or please do find me on LinkedIn. Again, you can find me at MattWeston365. But for now, I hope that was useful. I hope you uh, can implement that yourselves and I will look forward to speaking to you again in my next video. For now, take care.